Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here for videocopilot.net, your After Effects resource. This tutorial is a great one. It's very versatile, and you're gonna find it's very useful for a number of things. To bring demons back from the dead is tricky business, I can assure you. And what you need to do is get some candles, a blanket, a book of spells, and possibly some snacks, just in case you do bring the demons into the living world, they might be hungry and you don't want them to eat you. So bring some like fruit roll-ups or some Cheez-Its or what do you have lying around because you don't want to be their snack. And where you need to go is a graveyard and you have to go at night. It's really dark and you're scared to go. Um, bring a friend because you'd never want to die alone. <laughs> Trust me. And you're going to go there and you're going to try to bring the demons into the living world that night. And it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. Now, of course, this is After Effects, so forget all that stuff. Um, well, maybe not the snacks because this is a long one. Here's what we're creating. All right, so, of course, we have Sam Loya here, and he is, of course, half demon, as you can see. And what we're going to do is create a shot where we transform him. And if you look here, you can see he slowly mutates or morphs into this monster. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. What I have is a composition of our friend Sam giving us a crazy face. Um, this is raw footage, by the way, um, so just in case you were wondering. And what I'm going to do is motion track our footage. The key to this effect is stabilizing the face. And when you're shooting, the key is to make sure that your actor stays square with the camera um, because we're not doing 3D motion tracking, only 2D motion tracking. Also, another example of what you can do with this effect. You won't believe this. Hmm. Who said demons don't have to look good? Now, once we get this shot set up, you're going to be able to do a lot of things to the face, like colorize it add sunglasses, all that good stuff, maybe a tinfoil hat. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look again. What we're going to do is motion track our shot. So if we go to the workspace for motion tracking or if we go window tracker controls. And what we're going to do is stabilize the motion. If we click stabilize motion with the footage selected, we will open up in our viewer to begin tracking. Now, we need to track the rotation as well as the position. So, we'll take track point number one and drag it over to the left eye, track point number two to the right eye. What I like to do is just scale it out wide and then bring it back in. That way I don't have to adjust it twice. Same with this one. And we want to get a little bit of the eyebrow and just the corner of the eye. Now the eye is a good place to track because the eyes don't really move. Once you get that in place, um, we can begin tracking. So we're gonna come over to the tracker controls and analyze forward. Okay, so that looks pretty good, but if you need to, you can go and adjust these as needed. Um, one solution to a bad track is to go into the middle of the footage and set up the track points and then analyze forward and then come back after it's done tracking, then bring it back to where you started and then analyze backwards. And sometimes it works well because of where the reference point starts. Once we've tracked it, we're gonna click apply and it's gonna apply to the X and Y. And if I zoom out here, you'll see that all the footage is now stabilized around his face. There is one problem all of the blackness comes in around the edges as it rotates and repositions to make sure that the stabilization is locked in. So what we're going to do is we're going to pre-compose this footage. So we're going to choose layer, pre-compose, move all attributes, and we'll call this pre-comp face and choose OK. Then if we alt double click into the comp, we can now make adjustments inside of here. And what we want to do is increase the bounds of this composition. So composition, composition settings, and we're going to change the width and height to about 1700 by about 950. 
And what that's going to do is allow room for this footage to kind of move around. Okay, let's return to the original composition. And what we're going to do is use the tracking data to reverse what we've done and thus eliminating the edges turning black. Now here is the tricky part. What we want to do is bring this composition up above the first composition so that we can see both compositions. And then we're going to come to the top composition, hit U, and that will bring up the tracking information that has been applied to the anchor point and rotation. Now, then if we come down to our secondary comp and hit P, Shift, R, Shift, A, we bring up the anchor point, position, and rotation. And what we're going to do is use the information from the original track data to reverse what it's done to the footage. Now to do this is very simple, but we do want to understand what is happening. So if I alt click on the position, I can pick whip the anchor point of the tracked footage, of the stabilized footage. And what that will do is essentially use all of this anchor point data for the new position of this layer. So consider it reverse stabilization. Now we also need to reverse the rotation because not only is the footage shaky, but it's also shaky rotation wise. As you can see, it really rotates. Um, I purposely shot it shaky so that you could see how versatile this technique is. Now for the rotation, we want to alt click on the rotation stopwatch, pick whip the rotation. But if we let this go through, we're essentially adding rotation to something that already has rotation and we want to reverse the rotation. So we're going to add a little expression to the end, star or multiply times negative one. So whatever this says times negative one, thereby reversing it. So if this is negative four, this is plus four and so on, negative two plus two. And basically that reverses what's happening. Now, the position or the anchor point also needs to be adjusted and we can pick whip the anchor point to the position to the opposite of the pre-comp and that will then bring the entire footage back to its original state. That's the tricky part but I can assure you it's actually pretty simple once you understand what's going on and um, even if you don't understand just pick whip the values like I've shown you here and you're all set to go. Now, if I take these sunglasses from the original comp, bring them into this comp now, and play my footage back, the sunglasses don't stay on the face. But if I parent the sunglasses to the footage, it will then use all of the reverse position data to lock the sunglasses onto the footage. Okay, so now that we have the footage tracked and reverse tracked, we're going to add the liquify filter from effect, distort, liquify. Now the liquify filter is actually very powerful, except not very useful when you have moving footage, but because our footage is now tracked, so if we add a distortion to his face, it will stay locked on his face. Now this is probably one of the coolest things I ever came across. And what you do is of the many tools, there's one here that basically shrinks um, part of the image. So if we kind of zoom in here and we increase the brush size and the brush pressure, what I can do is hold down the mouse on his nose and what it does is shrinks the nose down, right? Pretty weird looking. I know, it's funny. Um, and if I run through the footage, you can see that his nose is staying shrunk down. And if I play this back, <laughs> Sam's actually right behind me and he's looking a little embarrassed. Um, if I play this back, we have that distortion locked on to the face. Now, if I were to apply this liquify to an adjustment layer or a non-tracked and reverse tracked footage, you wouldn't be able to do this. If I type in liquify and apply it to the adjustment layer and do the exact same thing, if I move around, the distortion also moves around because the footage is only being distorted at that point. It doesn't realize that there's a person in the shot. It just distorts the images based on that coordinate 
of the of the footage. So that's no good, and a lot of people see this as a big problem, but if you can track and reverse track, I know I'm saying that a lot, but I really want you to understand that concept it is very powerful. So if we go back to our footage and turn our liquify back on, you can see that the footage stays locked on to his nose being shrunken down. Now, you can do a million things with this. Personally, I like the idea of doing a crazy demon face. So I'm gonna reset this and we're gonna take a look at some of the tools. Well, we have the first one, which is essentially the smudge tool and change the brush size and the brush pressure. Now, if you bring the pressure down, the distortion is soft and slightly unaffected. But if you turn the pressure up to close to 100, you can really move pixels around. And even in this case, watch this. I mean, that stays locked onto his head because of the whole tracking business. Um, I like these ones for distorting eyes. And remember, it's all tracked in. So whatever you can think to do, you can come up with some pretty cool effects and some interesting characters for your uh, scary films, demons, zombies. What we're gonna do is take the smudge tool and if you hold control down, you can scale down the brush size. And we're gonna zoom in here, bring the brush pressure up, and we're just gonna make some evil eyebrows and just kind of drag these up high. And then we're gonna make it a little larger and you hit control and then just drag left or right and it kind of lets you do that. And we'll bring the middle of his eyes down here. We're gonna make his nose larger and that's what this tool here does. And we make a large brush and we can, oh, that's a little too much. Make the nose larger and maybe move the nose up. And then we'll stretch out the nostrils, why not? And by the way, it's actually probably better if you work on the area where you want the distortion to take place because that's where you wanna make your adjustments. At this time, I can show you the magic eraser. You just kind of erase and it removes the distortion from an area. You can also check out what the distortion looks like using the view mesh and some other settings. I mean, you're really gonna find this to be pretty powerful. But back to the smudge tool, let's just create some cool distortion. And maybe enlarge the mouth so it looks kind of crazy. So that looks pretty good. And we wanna be able to keyframe this on and off. And the great thing about the liquify is the distortion percentage. You can bring it down to zero or up to 100, or even past that, uh, but I don't recommend it. And what we're gonna do is go line this animation up to just before he turns into the demon, and turn the stopwatch on at 0%. And we're gonna move forward just a few frames there and change it to 100. And if we hit U on the keyboard, you can see the distortion happens just at that point in time. And he kind of stops it at the very end, and what we can do is then set another keyframe move forward and then turn it off. And that way he kind of turns on demon and then shuts off. Real quick, another cool tip is if you take the eraser tool, erase the distortion, okay, at any time. You can then add in some more distortion and guess what, it automatically is still keyframed by the distortion percentage, which makes this very versatile for you to be able to say no, and let me try something again. And then you can, you know, add some of your own distortion. You know, bring the nose down, make the nose bigger, mouth bigger. Okay, so next step, we wanna colorize the face. So I'm gonna create a new adjustment layer. Now I'm gonna move to the middle of the animation where the distortion takes place. And we're gonna draw a mask with the pen tool around his face. And you can, uh, you know, work on this or just do it roughly, you know, depending on how detailed you want it. And then if we hit MM, we can look at the mask properties. We can feather it, maybe 10. And then if we choose effect, color correction, hue and saturation, and effect, color correction, mm, curves. And what we're going to do is bring the saturation down. And of course, the adjustment layer allows you to apply effects to it, and it will only affect the layers beneath it. And then we're gonna add some contrast to the curves. Let's add a couple of points. 
and then we're gonna go to the red channel and bring the curve down to add a little green, a little demon green. You can even bring it down and then add some like red to just give it some demon contrast. And you, know, you can play with the blue channel, um, whatever you like. Um, also, we can expand the mask five pixels so that we can make sure to get all the edges around. Now, this layer needs to be locked to our footage. So at the point in time when you draw the mask, parent it to the comp. And then it should stay on it pretty good. Now what you want to do is animate it to fade out as the percentage of the distortion is faded on using the liquify filter. But the liquify filter uses a percentage from 0 to 100 just like opacity. So if we take the opacity of the adjustment layer, alt click on it, we can pick whip the distortion percentage. Then it will fade on as it distorts in. And that way you only have to reanimate the distortion percentage and everything else will stay locked into it because we're not just going to link this parameter. We're going to be able to link any other effects that we add to it. Now to perfect this even further, what you can do is hit M and keyframe the mask shape. And basically what you would do is move the points around the face move forward a little bit and then move the points again so that as the shot moves, you know, the face rotates, all that stuff, you'll be sure to keep any of the color inside of his face and not um, bleed out on other things. And you don't have to do it very often, but if you just kind of go through and make the slight adjustments, you can then refine this effect um, for that feature film composite. But for now, uh, we'll just uh, you know use the rough composite as it is here. Now, the next step is to add shadows into his face to make it more evil. Um, kind of like if you have a flashlight and you're telling scary stories, you want to make sure that the shadows are harsh so that the story is more frightening. I know it always worked on me when people told me stories. And I'm going to choose Effect, Color Correction, Curves. And what we're going to do is just bring the darkness down. And then we're going to take the pen tool and draw masks around the scary part that we want to add shadows to. So the eyes, for one, we can just draw shapes around the eyes using the pen tool. Draw some more shapes. And some more shapes. Then what we can do is feather these masks. So if we select the layer and hit F, you can select all the feathering, hold down Shift, and then increase the value for one, and it will change it for all of them. So as you can see, we add this nice shadowy effect. So now that we've done that, we want to parent our adjustment layer to the pre-comp, and that way the eyes should stay pretty close. And then what we want to do is hit T and U for this layer and we want to alt click on the opacity and link it to the liquify filter and again that way everything fades in at the same time now you may not want this effect to be 100 percent what you can do is add a little expression at the end divide by 2 and that way if this value is 100 it'll show up here as 50 if we go if it's 50 it'll be 25 and basically fade in at half the speed. And that way you can, you know, control the percentage through the expressions without having to, you know, reanimate every time with keyframes. Because if you can eliminate doing keyframes, you can really save some time. Now, that's looking pretty good. Um, you know, I'd probably make it a little scarier, but that's pretty good for now. The other thing we can do is add a crazy texture to his face. And what I'm going to do is go over to my Riot Gear effects. And by the way, I get a lot of questions. How do I get the Riot Gear folder into my project? Well, when you choose Import, select a folder, and there's a button that says Import Folder, and it'll import everything in there. So Riot Gear, available at videocopilot.net, of course. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is go to the Grungy Textures, Low Resolution, and the Grayscale. And we're going to use Grungy Map number two. Kind of looks like some stamped concrete, but kind of has some vein-like features. And what we're going to do is bring this out to our comp. And we'll hit T, bring the opacity down a little bit. 
and we want to actually change the transfer mode F4 and change it to overlay and maybe hard to see overlay and you can see it kind of creates a cool texture on the face so you can move it around to where you think it might look good and once you do you can then take the pen tool and draw around the face now you want to be careful about where you put this because on certain areas it's not going to look good um, what I recommend is doing the whole face and then adding more masks around the eyes, nose, and the mouth. And then what you want to do is hit MM, so bring up all the masks that we've just created, and then reverse the second two, so subtract them. And then what that'll simply do is, let's see if we solo this, it will reverse those spots. And if we feather it out, we can, uh, you know, make the mask a little bit softer. And, and if we turn the layers back on, this will actually just make it look more like it's on the face. And the opacity is at 50%. And we're going to then link this parent to our original layer, like we do with all the additions to the face. And then we're going to link the opacity to the liquify filter. Alt click on the opacity, pick whip it, and then add a little expression divided by two because we want it to be the maximum value of 50. And that way it fades on and then fades off. Um, what I'm also going to do is just add a final color correction layer new adjustment layer. We're just going to add a curves adjustment and just overall darken the image. Um, you can also add one of your Film Magic Pro presets. I like my green easy, of course. And that will just make the footage look nice. And you can also just make a, an adjustment to make it a little bit darker. And there we have it. Crazy demon face, of course. You want to change your distortion, take the eraser tool from the liquify, erase the distortion, and you know, you can just use the regular face. That's pretty scary alone, if you ask me. Um, and you know, we can make the nose small, because there's nothing funnier than a nose being ridiculously small. And everything is already still linked in together and we don't have to make any other adjustments. And if you're crafty enough, you could actually probably add some things, but you may want to track that separately so that um, it stays on the face a little bit better. Okay, well this looks really good, but of course there is one last thing to do and we wouldn't want to forget this. Because as we know, Demons look best wearing sunglasses. <laughs> well, I hope you guys had a fun time. I'm Andrew Kramer. And of course, come check out the blog at videocopilot.net. And don't forget to come by our products page. Our DVDs are fantastic. We have ride gear, designer sound effects, all these great tools to enhance your next project. And don't forget to leave a comment or even post a link to your demon videos. We want to see them at the videocopilot.net blog. I'm Andrew Kramer, and we'll see you next time.